Okay, I'm gonna try to keep this one short and sweet. I've been using the Windows 11 for a couple days now, and it's pretty great! Smash that bell icon! But really, I can't afford any potential issues installing Windows 11 on my main workstation, but I did have my old MateBook sitting around. It's an almost three-year-old laptop, and I was happy to see it's supported. At the time this video was shot, I'm on the Windows Insider's dev preview and a beta build should be coming out soon. This laptop was decently powerful for its day and I think this represents a solid look at some of the hardware legacy support in Windows 11 and we'll definitely talk about that a bit more in a sec. A little Core i7 quad core with 8 gigabytes of RAM, a 1440p touchscreen and one of those cute little NVIDIA MX250 GPUs. It's adorable. But thankfully, including one of those TPM security modules, so it's good to go for Windows 11. With such an early build of an operating system, it's encouraging to see snappy performance. This laptop is still pretty powerful for a thin and portable machine, even by today's standards. So when I see a lot of pretty being added to the UI, I get flashbacks to Windows Vista. In part, Vista was so rough because manufacturers kept slapping it on underpowered systems. The other part was, well, it was Vista. The quality of life stuff is welcome. I've always preferred the Microsoft method of snapping windows to the sides of the display. So getting organic options for triple and quad layouts is a nice way to spruce that up. This might be the placebo effect for being prettier, but touchscreen interactions seem improved. The new side panels are really slick and the act of sliding in from the edge of the screen with my fingers or thumb, that, that feels right. In general, it seems easier tapping and swiping through the UI with gestures. So please, someone tell me if I'm just making this up, if I'm just impressed by something that's a little prettier and a little cleaner. Now, I don't love the new layout for the file explorer, but I'm hoping that's just my lack of familiarity, like I'm having to look for my options and settings and my controls. A brief time with this and I should be able to say better whether I like it or whether it's just new. But the new Microsoft Store is definitely improvement. Significantly nicer, it's easier to navigate, updating programs doesn't feel as futzy, searching for apps is a bit more straightforward. I think this is something I'll use a bit more frequently where I almost never touch this on my desktop. For a lot of these services on Windows, apps are always competing against using the same service in a web browser. Unfortunately, we don't yet have access to Android apps, the Amazon App Store, or know yet what the process will be for sideloading Android apps when we get that. We did get the new beta for your phone, <laughs> connecting my OnePlus to my PC, it doesn't seem much different, so, so I guess I'm happy to have that for now. How handles Android apps is certainly something we're gonna wanna focus on, especially as we see more progress with Windows on ARM. Quick and dirty breakdown. This is all looking really good. Programs launch about the same. We're not seeing any significant performance degradation, and we've laid the groundwork for more mixed mode computing. And it's a little prettier. I don't think anyone's ever gonna complain about that. To wrap this video up, I wanted to briefly chat requirements and legacy support and the tone of our tech conversations. It's a bummer that Windows 11 draws a line in the sand on updates for older machines. It's always been a perk of buying a Microsoft box that you were likely in line for updates well past the expected hardware lifecycle of that product. Even if it ran like garbage, you could still probably jump in if you wanted to. Moving forward, Microsoft is leaning on specific hardware security modules and specific features of newer processors and chipsets. That's gonna cut off a lot of folks, and quite a few are likely on decently powerful machines that otherwise would have been able to run this flashier new UI. As a quick tangent, it's always worth digging into your BIOS to make sure you have this TPM module and that it's been activated. Ditto secure boot. My, my desktop failed the PC health check until I dug for those settings in my BIOS. But getting back to legacy hardware, 
I still use my Razer Blade 14. It's over on the little desk over there. This laptop turned five years old this May, and it's a machine still capable as a portable editing rig, even as I've moved up to 4K video editing. DaVinci Resolve gave it a nice shot in the arm with better GPU support. But alas, the sixth generation Intel chip in there is not going to be on the list for Windows 11. My Razer Blade is more powerful than the Matebook I'm running Windows 11 on right now. And that's frustrating. I understand that feeling. It does speak to the current dilemma Microsoft has been mired in for a while though. From Windows 7 on, the conversation about Windows has to include room for significantly longer legacy support and somehow, also has to be a sleek, modern, perfectly performing home for all of our apps and services. But you really can't do both. Windows 8 showed us how aggro techies were going to react if you changed the look or feel of Windows. Especially from techies, we act like it's so easy to just make something cool happen. I mean, like, is it really so hard to just take Windows 7 and make it run faster and make it prettier and then surprise me with some kind of functionality perfectly designed for only my workflow, make it about me, and then make it free? <laughs> Come on, Microsoft, way to fail. I'm just gonna go get a Mac, I guess, which won't support any of my prior software purchases. Okay, straw man for comedic effect, but techies, you do kind of sound like that sometimes. For whatever reason, we're kind of fine with Apple breaking from the past, removing features or functionality, and techies will give them a really long runway of consideration. We'll give Apple all the time they need to bring a new platform up to the same level of polish and functionality as the platform it's replacing. We did it when they moved to Intel, and we're doing it again with the M1 now. And then, we're kind of fine scraping all those older Apple machines from our coverage, even though they were the top of the line systems a year prior. Now I'm not saying we should just flip on Windows systems and make them just as disposable in our videos, in our commentary. I'm proud to show off my five-year-old gaming rig. I'm still getting my money's worth from that system. But we're talking about a free software upgrade path for machines roughly three years old. That's not as bad as I think some folks are making it out to be. In a future where we need to sort and manage the transitions to new form factors, modular computing environments, where we desperately need to encourage more competition between x86 and ARM processors, and where we can even better blur the lines between phone, tablet, laptop, and desktop, Windows 11 feels like an irritating, but necessary step. Not just for this one operating system transition, but for all the future hardware to come. So, them's my thoughts. Didn't want to get too serious at the end of this here, so hit me up in the comments. Have you installed Windows 11 yet? Share some thoughts. Is your PC capable of running Windows 11? Drop some comments down below. Let's get into some nerdy conversations about the future of Windows. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel, and all of your support. Participation, sharing is critical, and you might want to consider joining the list of names scrolling by on my screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically a collection of the coolest tech geek pals on the web today, so I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at somegadgetguy on the Twitters and the Twitch. Uh, the Facebooks and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next video.